it's taken me quite some time to reach a point where I'm comfortable in my personal style and in the clothes that I decide to wear day to day. So I've tried a lot of things, I've made a lot of mistakes in the process, I've spent a lot of money, I've bought a lot of fast fashion. And so I feel like because I've made so many of those mistakes and so many bad fashion decisions that I've earned the right to sit here and share with you all of the things that have actually worked for me. Now, in this video, I've put together 10 style tips that I think will be useful to you regardless of your personal style or your tastes. And I hope that these tips will help you put together some great outfits and also provide you with some food for thought before adding particular items to your wardrobe. And so here are my 10 tips to be a more stylish you. So let's kick things off with the fundamentals and my very first style tip is to know your body shape. I think this is really important to keep in mind when it comes to deciding what to buy and what not to buy in your wardrobe. Now I'm petite and I'm pear shaped and so naturally I want the items in my wardrobe to elongate my frame and to take away from the fact that I am vertically challenged. But I do want to make a point though of saying that all of the literature out there about body shapes should really only serve as a guideline because there are no hard and fast rules about what you should and you shouldn't wear. But what I find that that information does is it does help guide how to navigate those trends in particular styles and I do keep that in mind when I'm determining whether or not I should buy something or whether or not I should avoid it. Now my second style tip is more of a general one and it's to focus on fit and proportions. This is where you should take a step back and consider the parts of your body that you would like to place more emphasis on over others. So being a pear-shaped petite person, I am much more comfortable with things being fitted on my upper half than I am on my lower half. But like I said earlier, there are no hard and fast rules because for the longest time I was wearing skinny jeans. I was wearing skinny jeans for about 15 years. I've only really navigated away from those and opted for more straight and slim cut styles in the last 12 months. And so that just goes to show that I was wearing very fitted items on my bottom half there but it's the idea of balancing out those proportions so if you're going for something slimmer down the bottom then you can go for something looser up top and vice versa and all of those little details really go to making your outfit a lot more stylish there are other details that I keep in mind that relate to fit but not so much body shape that I really prioritize so things like sleeve length or hem length I've really prioritized making sure that things actually fit me properly because I find that makes such a difference with the overall polish and finish of your outfit so I know it's a bit of a pain but paying a visit to the tailor every once in a while really does wonders for those items in your wardrobe that are just not quite there and don't quite hit the mark because once they do and once they fit you properly they just make you feel like a million bucks. I have a few items banking up now that I have to take to the tailor but I am no stranger to paying them a visit. I have hemmed many pairs of pants, I have taken up the sleeves of many jackets and coats and I find that all those little tweaks make such a difference. Real quick here's a word from the sponsor of today's video which is a New York based shoe label, Ally Shoes. Ally Shoes decided enough was enough of heels that kill your feet. While there are lots of brands out there making bold claims that their heels are comfortable, Ally Shoes actually has a podiatrist on their design team. I've now got five pairs of their shoes, a low block heel, a boulder block heel, kitten heels, and a pair of ankle boots. And they are hands down the comfiest heels I have ever owned. There's a rubber sole, there's arch support, there's a toe bed, which is game changing. And the sizing is inclusive and it's available in half sizes from US 4.5 all the way to 12. And there's different widths to choose from. When you place your order, the shoes are made for you, not you having to shove your foot in an already made shoe. Ally Shoes are even awesome enough to provide me with a discount code to share with you guys. And so I'll pop that in the description section below, as well as somewhere here on the screen. I have harped on about them over on the blog, as well as here on my channel. And so be sure to check them out. Thanks to Ally Shoes for sponsoring today's video. And now back to it. Now onto style tip number three, and when it comes to adding items in your wardrobe, you should focus on quality rather than quantity. Quality extends across a range of different metrics. It can be fabric, fit, style of the item that you're interested in. You'll find good quality pieces will really last, particularly if those pieces are classic items. I had a phase where I was a sucker to fast fashion. I really loved ASOS. I loved Zara when they finally opened up in Australia. Just all of those stores that are constantly churning new items and dishing out discount codes. I was wearing a lot of trend-led fashion and not really shopping smart or thinking about longevity of the items that I was adding to my wardrobe. And so looking at my wardrobe now, there's not really much that I've kept from those days. There's probably about 
three or four items that I've still hung on to, but the rest have all moved on. The thing that I've learned though, since leaving behind my problematic fast fashion shopping habits, is that you don't necessarily need to spend more money to get quality. There are a lot of good quality classic items that you can source from the high street. And one prominent example that comes to mind is my favorite ever classic crew neck t-shirt. That's from Arquette. I've got it in about eight different colors now and it's only 20 US dollars for a t-shirt, roughly 26 Australian dollars depending on what the foreign exchange rate is doing. But that's the perfect example of an organic cotton tea, really good Good quality, a really good cut and something that I have worn for the past three to four years and have just constantly relied on. Brands like Arquette as well, they have their core signature pieces. They're not as trend led and so it's really nice to be able to shop from a place knowing that they're just not going to overhaul everything and then the next week everything will be fluoro and sequency and scary. Another great example of a quality high street wardrobe staple is the trench coat from Marks and Spencer. I've got two of those now in navy and in beige and they retail for $150 each and you guys know that I have popped into Burberry and I've tried on their trench coats. They have been on my wish list for a really long time. I mean they retail now for about $4,000 and since trying on the Burberry trench coat last month I've gone back and I've tried it on while wearing my Marks and Spencer trench coat so that I was able to make a comparison right there on the spot. And to be honest guys, apart from the lining, apart from some details on the buckles, there really isn't that much difference. And so I think that I will just ultimately never end up getting the Burberry trench coat because I'm just so happy with the high street versions that I have. There are so many examples like that where you can find some really decent, high quality, long lasting wardrobe staples and you can just get them off the high street. Now, my fourth style tip relates to how to approach colour when it comes to putting together your outfits. And my tip here is to keep it simple and intentional. Now, when I've been putting together outfits in recent years, I have been much more intentional when it comes to colour. And I found that the structure of the three colour rule has really helped here. It's as simple as the title suggests, and it's just to try not to exceed three colours when you're putting together outfits. Now, I love my neutrals. I have for some time. I love the safety and the security that it provides, and I love that everything just goes with each other. But 2023 Virginia has been branching out, and I have been experimenting with pops of colour here and there this year. And I have found that it has been less scary to do so because of the three color rule. I still apply that rule and I found that it's been a real seamless transition into adding pops of color. And so when you hear the three color rule being thrown around, it's not necessarily just for people that dress in neutral tones, but it's for all colors. It applies to everybody. Similarly, I also find outfits that only incorporate two colors or monochromatic outfits are equally as stylish. And so while it might sound limiting to cap things at three colors, there's actually a lot more variety within that rule that you're able to explore. Now my fifth style rule is to experiment with textures. And I think that this style rule really goes hand in hand with the three color rule to create a really interesting and stylish outfit. You can make your outfits really interesting by mixing different textures. And that's just easily achievable by all of the different fabrics that are out there. Silk, leather, suede, linen, all of those fabrics really go to make your outfit more interesting, particularly when it comes to monochromatic outfits. Now I'm just using black as an example here. And as you can see, there are very different but very interesting outfits just using the one color. Mixing different textures is a way of being quite playful with your outfit because for those that aren't as intentional, a monochromatic outfit can be really, really boring. However, as you can see, it's anything but. Now my sixth style tip is don't be afraid to mix high-end items with high street pieces. I've got a decent collection of designer bags and designer belts in my wardrobe and I think that when it comes to high-end luxury, accessories are probably my limit. Like I can't really see myself ever adding any high-end clothing to my wardrobe unless it was very, very heavily discounted, then I would probably consider it. And so that means that I am mixing a lot of my high-end designer bags with a lot of items that I'm wearing in my wardrobe that comprise of contemporary labels as well as high street pieces. And so I will wear a bag that retails for over $3,000 with my $25 t-shirt. And when you're strategic with your pops of high end, it actually elevates your entire outfit. I actually feel like the simpler that you keep your outfit, the more expensive and polished that you look as well. I love judging up the simplest of outfits by slapping on one of my designer belts for two reasons. 
one, just to increase the overall polish of my outfit, but also to chip away at the insane cost per wear. But I think that when you strategically mix high end with high street, then your overall look will be very premium, very stylish. Now style tip number seven is to have some outfit formulas up your sleeve or have a style uniform, which is also how it's commonly referred to. Now generally, I like to incorporate an element of slouch with an element of structure, but a lot of the outfit formulas that I have in my rotation aren't exactly rocket science either. For example, I wasn't the pioneer of the blazer and jeans look, nor did I discover the blazer and dress look either. If you want to credit me, then go right ahead. But one of my go-to outfits, particularly when it comes to getting dressed for work, and it saves a lot of time when getting dressed in the morning, is a crew neck t-shirt, a pair of straight leg trousers, and some sort of jacket, whether it's a blazer or a trench coat. Shoes wise will either be a pair of flats or a pair of mid heels. I don't wear high heels anymore. The pandemic put me out of practice, but also it was like one day I realized that I didn't need to put my feet in that pain and I could simply just like not wear high heels. Magic. And in the summer, one of my go-to outfit formulas was a tank top, a pair of shorts, and a shirt, which I would wear as a jacket. And I really enjoyed that look. And I would switch out between Birkenstocks or sandals, depending on how I was feeling. But it just makes getting dressed just very, very easy once you have those tried and true sort of stylish outfit combinations that you can rely on. And you don't really have to think about it twice after you've got them down. Now style tip number eight is to add elements of frosting to your outfit. And I see elements of frosting being added in two different ways. One is in the accessories department. I have really been embracing different types of simple jewelry recently. I used to really only stick to sentimental pieces. So jewelry pieces given to me by family members or my husband, like my wedding bands and things like that. But recently I have branched out into other more fun, but still simple jewelry items just to zhuzh up my outfit. And so for example, I've been really loving these hoops that I picked up in November last year. These are from an Australian jewelry label called Arms of Eve, and they also do bracelets and necklaces as well. My outfits are really quite simple and quite pared back. And so I find that when I add these little elements, it really adds a pop and a little bit of interest. There are many, many jewelry brands out there that offer that same high quality finish that I'm sure you'll be able to find, but I have really been enjoying dabbling in jewelry and adding those elements to my looks lately. And another way in which you can add frosting is you can embrace a belt. Now I have a whole video dedicated to the designer belts that I have in my collection, and so I will link that so you can have a watch there. But I really love how a belt just brings an entire outfit together, particularly a bougie one. It just completely elevates your entire look. And you don't just have to wear a belt through the belt loops of a pair of trousers or a pair of jeans. I use belts over blazers. I use belts over coats. I even use belts over tops just to add an element of interest. So belts are actually quite a versatile accessory. Style tip number nine is to experiment with layering. And this also includes finding a secondary purpose for some items in your wardrobe. An easy way that I can illustrate that is the fact that in the summer, I have been wearing a lot of button down shirts as jackets. So ordinarily, I would really only wear button down shirts during transitional seasons or in the winter when it's cold. But I've really enjoyed having a lightweight jacket during the summer just to keep me protected from the sun. Another way that you can layer and assign a secondary purpose is with your knits. And so knits don't have to just be worn as knits. <laughs> you can also wear them over your shoulders, over a blazer or a coat. It's a very New York Pinterest type look, but it is catching on a lot more. And it's really nice to be able to extend the life of a knit and use it for another purpose. I really like that part about it. And I also think that it just looks very casual chic, very cool. And my 10th and final style tip for this video is to keep your wardrobe organized and to have a place for your things. Let's face it, Marie Kondo had an impact on a lot of people, me included, but the idea that every single item in your wardrobe has its own dedicated home really does make it easy when it comes to pulling together outfits or having a play with the items in your wardrobe. I film a lot of short form videos, a lot of reels for my Instagram. Some of those videos will have about five or six different outfits and I don't actually plan those ahead. I just have a space for all of the things in my wardrobe and I will just pick and choose because I can see everything and I will just pull it together on the spot. 
and I found that that is so much easier because I can see everything. There was a period of time where I wasn't filming any reels for about six months last year when I was very quiet on Instagram and that was because my wardrobe was in a perpetual state of mess. So when your wardrobe is chaos then your outfits will likely be chaos too or you'll just end up wearing the same thing over and over again. When your wardrobe is tidy and organized and there's a place for everything then you will just get a lot more wear out of all of the items and you'll be able to put together a lot more stylish outfits. I hope you found these style tips to be helpful. Thank you so much for watching guys. It actually took me surprisingly a long time to reduce everything into 10 tips but these are the 10 style tips that I wish that fast fashion past Virginia had heard back in the day. I really feel like I would have kicked those habits a lot earlier had I known. If you like this video then be sure to hit that thumbs up button so that I know that you did and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm what V wore everywhere and so if you wanted to hunt me down to say hello then you know where to find me. I'll see you guys next week for a brand new video. Until then, bye!